now to my interview with the Shadow Finance Minister, Katie Gallagher. I spoke to her about the allegations made about the treatment of Kimberley Kitching in the wake of her tragic death. But we begin by talking about the upcoming budget this week. Thanks for your time. We're hearing, and we've just heard Andrew Clennell report, payments to lower and middle income earners, uh, one-off payments, temporary support in the terms of cost of living. Um, our understanding as well that there will be uh, some respite in terms of the fuel excise. Would Labor welcome that, given how severe cost of living pressures are right now? Thanks for having me on, Kieran. Well, we've certainly been saying, and I think everyone knows, cost of living pressures are the real issue that this budget needs to address. I guess what we'll be looking for is to make sure it's not a short-term political fix for the Morrison government. You know, these payments just to get them on the other side of an election, but, you know, genuine response to some of the cost of living pressures. Uh, and, you know, forgive us for being a bit cynical about some of this uh, being rolled out in the, you know, face of an election when they've had 10 years, essentially, to deal with some of these emerging pressures. The budget now, just a couple of days away, it's, it's fair to assume that Labor will just give, give it a tick of approval if it's something to help people at a time when inflation's rising and, and uh, wages haven't kept up? Yeah, well, we'll certainly have a look at what they uh, roll out on the day. I think it's right for us to sit back and wait for the detail. We see, obviously, drops day by day, but we, we're a responsible opposition, so let's see. I mean, we do want to see effective response to cost of living pressures, but, again, we would say, you know, we're seeing this in the face of, you know, 50 days people will be voting, essentially, so we don't want to see something that's about a political fix for Scott Morrison and not a genuine response to cost of living pressures. And, again, you know, this is a nine-year-old government that's had years to do this. Um, at the same time, they've been attacking people's wages, which is a part of the problem. So, you know, it can't be just these short-term payments to, to get them through to the other side of an election. The Solomon Islands' decision to get closer to China uh, to a draft agreement at the moment, but in part it's being attributed to a falling aid budget from Australia towards uh, the Solomons. Would Labor restore aid spending in the region to what it was at under the, the previous Labor government? Well, we'll be releasing all of our policies in the lead up to the election. I think what we have said is we were critical of those cuts because you know, that aid does play a role in, you know, not only supporting our Pacific partners, but in relationships uh, between Australia and Pacific nations. And we've seen that deteriorate under this government. Uh, so I think it's disappointing uh, to see we're in this state. Uh, we are looking at ODA and what needs to happen there. And it's certainly fallen to, I think, historic lows under this government. And we're, we're paying the price for some of that now. Let's uh, turn our attention to the, the issue that's been uh, dominating a lot of discussion around Canberra recently, Kimberly, Kimberly Kitching's passing. Why would she have described you as a mean girl? What did you ever do to earn that nickname? Uh, well, Kieran, I've, I should start by saying, um, you know, we send our condolences to Kimberly's uh, family again. It's been a deeply distressing time for anyone who knew Kimberly, uh, and she will be missed in the Senate. Uh, I hadn't heard that term before it was um, published in the paper, so I can't answer that, really. It wasn't a term that I heard Kimberly use. certainly wasn't a term she used uh, directly to me. I think it's, um, you know, it's an un unfortunate term. In a sense, it, it does diminish uh, women. Uh, and, you know, as I said, I, I can't really answer any more than that. I don't, I, I don't think I did anything that would deserve that name, but I don't think any person deserves that name on any side of the political chamber. Did you ever have disagreements, harsh words, difficult arguments with Kimberly Kitching? No, I didn't. Um, and I think, um, you know, people understand that in politics there are disagreements. It is a, an environment where conflict comes and people have difference of opinions. Um, so I don't think that's unusual in politics, but um, no, I, I certainly didn't have anything like that. Can you understand why Labor's been accused of hypocrisy on this issue when it, it goes so hard on the government on these sorts of issues, but then doesn't subject itself to scrutiny when the claims arise? Well, I think for my first response to that is 
I'm not aware of a complaint. I, I have. I don't think one has been received, written or otherwise. So it is difficult to know what what you would be inquiring into. We've certainly seen allegations and accusations made in the media. Um, we've chosen not to respond to those, um, not because we can't defend ourselves, but because the you know the person who's involved is no longer here, and you know I don't know that that's respectful. Uh, to go into that detail when somebody can't is not in a position to respond. Bill Short and Anthony Albanese, you and other senior colleagues have supported the notion that women should be believed when there, there are these sorts of matters that arise. Why shouldn't Kimberly Kitching, a strong woman, why shouldn't she be believed? Well, Kimberly absolutely was a strong woman. Um, you know, she was, um, you know, stood by her beliefs and and was an important part of the Labor team. To be honest, I don't know what Kimberly thinks or how she would want this handled, and that's part of the issue here, I think. Um, you know, that this is, in a sense, um, you know, allegations being raised in the media, and I feel that it's just very... It's impossible to respond on the detail uh, for someone who's no longer here. Do you, did Linda Reynolds, Linda Reynolds show you correspondence from the, the late senator that you believed was a leak to the government against Labor? Well, I'm not trying to avoid the question, Kieran, but, again, by answering it, um, you know, I think I would... It, it would be disrespectful to Kimberley because, again, she's not in a position to respond. This is part of the issue we have in dealing with the specifics um, of some of the allegations that have been raised. And I don't feel comfortable uh, saying something or doing something that, um, you know, puts Kimberley in a disadvantage in the sense that whatever I say, you know, if she was here, I'm sure she would have a response for. And that's, you know, that's the position I... or decision I took two weeks ago when these were first raised. It's why we'll... We issued a statement making it at a high principle level, clear what our position is, and, um, you know, my intention is to, to not go into the detail because of that. Senate, Senator Kitching denied leaking to the government. Um, she has denied it in, in a written statement. I'm not sure it was lodged with the, the powers that be within Labor. I, I don't think it was. But it was used, this whole issue, to have her removed from the Tactics Committee... Should there have been a due process for Kimberley Kitching before she was simply dumped? That's what the likes of Michael Danby, her friends and others are saying. There should have been due process. There wasn't. It was unfair. Well, again, um, Karen, and again, I'm really not trying to avoid the, the question. Um, I think it's, it, it is understood that Kimberley uh, had been suspended from the Tactics Committee um, and, uh, you know, that... I don't think that's in dispute. Um, the reasons why, how it happened, um, all of that are details that I, I just feel that, you know, with Kimberley no longer he here, she is not able to prosecute her side of the argument. So it's unfair if we... if, you know, the people who are here issue their side of the argument and, and then what? It's, it's, it's a very difficult set of circumstances I think we find ourselves in. We're trying to be as respectful uh, to Kimberley and her family and her loved ones as possible. Uh, and, you know, I, I think Bill summed it up last week when he said he thinks Kimberley would want us to move on and win the election, um, you know, and I think I took, I took those words, um, you know, seriously. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very difficult situation to be in, to, to not go into the details when that's what the media is certainly wanting. And tomorrow, Parliament sits a, a chance for the Parliament to farewell a senator who, whose life was cut short. So, in that sense, before the budget, a, a chance, I guess, a hope from you as well that it can be, uh, in a political sense, uh, able to be dealt with finally. Well, um, you know, the condolence motion is an important day um, and I have no doubt there'll be many, many senators who want to speak and place on the record their respects for Kimberley and her family. I understand her family will be joining 
us in the Senate and I'm sure, you know, all of us would hope that it's a day where her life and her legacy and her, her um, you know, campaigns that she was very successful in can be respected and observed. Katie Gallagher, I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you, Kieran.